I'm Rosie. And I'm Jim. And this is Cruising Sea Venture. everyone, thanks for joining us for installment 7 of our refit series. Last time we were with you, we talked about finishing the upper deck, putting the boat back into the water, and we cruised home on a rainy, windy day. So in this episode, we're going to talk about what we did when we got back home and hopefully what the yard is doing while we're not there. At the end of this episode, we're going to do a short Q&A to share with you some of the questions that people have been asking and to let you know, of course, what the answers are. Right here we are in the evening, back in Everett, and supposed to be working on installing the railings, of which you can see absolutely none is done. The weather's been sunny, but cold and damp at night from all the humidity. So the deck has not gotten dry enough. In fact, it's been iced over in the mornings. But least anyone think that we're just uh, having to bide our time. This is the kind of sunsets we have, and this is the view from our moorage slip in Everett in the evenings. So instead of working on railings, we're compelled to enjoy the view, have a margarita, and tonight I believe it's uh, fish tacos made with the halibut caught in Haida Gwaii. Hi, we're in Everett. It's sunny and uh, a little wet. And so here's the deck. You can see we kind of tried to dry it off on one side. The other side's still a little wet. It was icy this morning. And we are installing our stern center stanchion. So we're starting to reinstall the railing. Of course, we start with the most difficult one used to be that the stern light was here mounted to the deck oh. trying to eliminate some of the deck penetrations. Can you show us again where it was? Right here. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, so now we have a new stern light that we've mounted to the post. We've run the wiring up through the middle of the post downstairs. So we're working on getting this one installed. So we've got to now caulk it in place. Yep. We've got the bolts in. We drilled the holes taped around it so we can the cock cannot can only go where we want it to go and uh, hopefully we can get a good clean finish we'll see how it goes all right we've got our nice little pad of Sequoflex 291 so we should be in a position hopefully to find our four bolt holes 5 16 bolts all right our first stanchion is done 14 to go but we did the hardest one first one with the wire don't know why we did the hardest one first but no complaints this is our view from the Port of Everett while we're doing this. And the sun is out and it's December. How cool is that? All right, so here's the holes before Jim is sanding them. These are the old stanchions. So we're just gonna clean that up a bit so we can put the new stanchions in make, place. Make it all smooth for the new washers and stuff. working on the railing post in the back. We're pretty slow at it. Okay. It's a matter of drilling a, like a quarter inch hole up from the bottom to place our holes. The 5 16 hole down from the top. 
to make sure they're we got the bolts in the right place stanchions in the right place then tape them all off then a better cock then bolt them down then move on to the next one then have a beer then watch some more sailing videos online and then another beer and then more stanchions we'll eventually get to all 15. hello we're here working on our upper deck and here you can see we've gotten some of the railing done We've got the starboard side and the stern, and now we're working on finishing the port side. We have the screw holes drilled out, and we've caulked, uh, excuse me, we've taped where we're going to caulk around the stanchion, and then we need to remove this railing and all of the posts, put some caulk down, and then reinstall them. So that's what's next. Cock is going on to the stanchion post. At the cock, Secoflex 291 being smoothed out evenly under the stanchion post. All right, here we are, and we are done except for putting the lifeline in. Take a look. Not you. Not me. <laughs> Not you. The lifeline goes right through these eye bolts that are welded onto the outside in the middle. So we'll get those on here in the next several days. And reinstalling the railing project will be completed. Yay. Very exciting as we enjoy a beautiful day in the Northwest. It's supposed to be rain tomorrow, so we're enjoying it while we can. All right, here's Sea Ventures radar that we've been working on. We're actually uh, cleaned it all up and painting it with um, the recommended paint, which is Krylon Fusion in a gloss white. We're painting right over the Furuno name. We have something special planned for that spot. Hi, we are getting ready to take our radar out to the shipyard for them to uh, mount it on the superstructure. But before we do that, we wanted to customize it a little bit. So here's our radar. We cleaned it all up and lightly spray painted it with a matching uh, white paint. And now... Now we're scared. <laughs> here's the, the fancy stuff. I'm gonna go a little higher, I think. There you go. Right there? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So if you look really close, you can see the Furuno underneath it, but it's going to be 10 feet off the deck. So there we go. Our cool new radar. Well, our cool new old radar. These are the two new winches we've ordered for the mast to raise and lower the boom. We've chose the Warren 3500 S. It's a 3500 pound winch motors with a synthetic cable. So we have two of them. One to raise and lower the dinghy, one to raise and lower the boom. So these are going up to the co-op so they can take the whole units and correctly mount them onto the new boom. One above and one below to operate the boom. Okay, we're in Port Townsend at the Shipwrights Co-op and we're dropping off some stuff. So here are the winches that we are going to put on 
the boom for lifting uh, and lowering the mast and the boom line for the dinghy so we can raise and lower the dinghy. And of course we showed you earlier our radar <laughs> with our new Sea Venture logo on it. So Sea Venture name on it. So there you go. These are the things we're dropping off and uh, excited to watch them get installed. Here is our superstructure so far. You can see the crow's nest at the top with the two sidebars that hold the paravane poles. Those bars are also going to hold all the antennas that are going to be on the vessel. Um, we've got part of a ladder here. It doesn't quite make it all the way up to the crow nest. The crow's nest, they're going to finish that in the next couple of days. Um, so that's the port side. And then we'll walk around to the front. And these two forward supports are going to be on the flying bridge, and the stern supports are going to be on the lower back uh, deck that we rebuilt pre earlier. And then you can see it goes on up to the crow's nest and the paravane poles, the poles that support the paravanes, uh, poles in the up position, and all of the antennas. And then if we walk over on the starboard side, a little simpler, no ladder going on here. Um, and this is actually where we come out of the house and onto the back deck. So we want to keep that as simple as possible. So there you have it. That's our superstructure so far. All right, here is the view of the existing superstructure as it will look from the back of the boat. <laughs> Jim's climbing it. <laughs> so you really are gonna get up there. Yes, okay, good. But there's more lava still in the bill. That's right. Good morning. It's a beautiful day in the Northwest, but a little bit wet. We are working on the upper deck and uh, Jim is gonna work on wiring the stern light. And let me show you what we're looking at. Here you can see it, everything is very wet. Um, but we wanna get that stern light wired so we can finish up our work up here. Well, first we've got it attached with a really long bolt, and that needs to be switched out to a shorter bolt. All right, we're cocking up the holes and inserting the screws to the poles so we can uh, make sure we have a good seal here. If I can find the holes. <laughs> Okay, Jim's cut the wires and now he's stripping the ends. And we have our trusty bin of connectors. Alright, we've got the wires cut now. So I'm going to put this heat shrink sleeve and just slide it back out of the way for now. Really don't need the heat shrink sleeve, I suppose, because the fitting here actually is a crimp and heat shrink combination. But uh, we're going to crimp it, heat shrink it, and then we're going to heat shrink it a second time since it's this outdoor application thing going on. And I don't want to deal with the possibility of it being an issue down the road. That's a nice tight fit there. So the next step, we're going to take the trusty heat gun. It seems to have an amazing number of uses on the boat. And without burning ourselves, you can see how that shrinks. Now we're going to slide the black sleeve over that whole assembly. and kind of do it again. Ow. What? That's hot on my finger. Oh. It's a short wire. Heat shrink that on until it's nice and melted. 
That's good. Let that sit for a little bit. One of the challenges when you do this heat shrink is it shrinks the tip up. And it makes it not want to plug in. This one plugs in right here. We will get it, there it is, all plugged in. That's gonna, in the end, fit like that right there. Then for practice, we repeat the whole process. Sleeve gets on and out of the way. Blue crimp fitting. Slid on so the wire goes all the way, way into the, solidly into the metal sleeve. Fitting itself crimped. Double check, you have a nice tight fitting now. So we're doubling it up just for fun. Highly unlikely this fitting would ever come apart, right? Not sure how it would ever come apart. It's a little bit hot to touch. And in it is. There we go. All, All right, what are you doing? Trying to get the ball being good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I put the ball in, tested it, it works. That's always a good thing to know. And then this cover goes on, we just gotta figure out which way it goes. The other way. Right here. And a little baby screwdriver. It's not like I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> And there we go. New we have stern a stern light, light. Fully installed. All right, we've got the stern light fully installed. We've got these two wires. I could have put a, we can put a plastic sleeve around them. We could wrap them in uh, electrical tape. We'll do one of the two. Uh, but our life, our uh, life sling ring thing goes right here. So this, I'll actually be kind of behind that anyway when we're all done. But I think I'll wrap them in something just so it looks good double protection I suppose look like someone actually knew what they were doing when they did it try to make it look like that anyway but anyway stern lights done yay there it is in all its glory now we can go boating sort of at night and it actually works well no mast headlight yeah no we got work so to do over here <laughs> still no nighttime boating. <laughs> all right here's the finished view of the railing we've added the lifeline and um, and you saw the light get installed. So now we're ready to take the upper deck back to Port Townsend. Hey, thanks for watching this episode. We hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, our budget, I think we're staying right at the $112,000 mark. You notice I just keep moving the budget as the number goes up, so we're always on budget. That's, that's my new theory about how to be on budget, basically, with these kind of deals. But it's all, it's all good. Uh, so keep watching and we'll keep on sticking through this refit till it's done and then we'll actually go out in the ocean and have some real fun. Uh, don't forget, right at the very end, we're gonna do a little Q&A. So if you have any questions or anything, go ahead and leave a question in the comments and we'll answer it at the end of the next video. And if you like the video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe if you want. I think if you click the little bell next to the subscribe button, it's the notification icon, I think is what it's called. and. Uh, then uh, uh, you'll get an email when we upload a new video, if you want, and if not, that's cool too. All right, so next time, wishing you fair wind and flat seas, but that's not it. It's no wind and flat seas. 
No wind and flat seas, because you see, no mass, no sails. All right, bye for now. Hey everyone, time for Q&A, but first Prost, right? Because you can't have too much wine. So, this little Q&A, we've been having people ask questions. We thought about doing a Q&A uh, video, but we decided instead we would just add a little Q&A section maybe to the end of every video and answer questions since the last video was out. So, to start uh, this idea, we'll just see how it works, what the hell. Uh, after our fuel management uh, uh, episode where we talked about how we manage the 2,160 gallons of diesel fuel on board, uh, we got a couple, I thought, pretty good questions that I probably should have addressed in the video. So let's throw them out now. Question one was, uh, geez, guys, you have two engines. Can't you just run on one engine and save a bunch of fuel? And the answer to that is yes, sort of, kind of, maybe, if you have to, yes. How's that for an answer? So, yes, yeah, Sea uh, Ventures twin engine. Yes, you could run on one engine. You would have like this crazy range of like 7,000 nautical miles. Uh, but uh, running on one engine um, works for a short period of time. But it makes Sea Venture want to go around in a circle, in a relatively tight circle. Uh, remember that with the twin engine, the props are offset. So that pushes pretty hard up one side. Um, and, to, and wants it to make it turn the boat. Plus the other propeller now is a big 26 inch bronze propeller not turning, causes a lot of drag on the opposite side and makes the boat want to turn. You can overcome that with the rudders, but I think it makes the running gear and the autopilots have to work really hard to keep the boat straight. So generally speaking, no, you really wouldn't probably want to run long term on one engine or, or plan to. But if you needed to, to uh, extend range for a reason, or if you had an engine problem, absolutely. Or while at sea, changing oil, uh, uh, absolutely. Run on one engine, not a problem. Uh, but So that's kind of the answer to the can we run on one engine. Yes, but you probably wouldn't want to actually plan that as a strategy for long range cruising. All right, question two related to fuel management. Uh, are RPMs? Uh, someone picked up on that we run our engines at 1500 RPM. The Ford Lehman 120s, continuous duty rating, made to be run 24 hours a day at 2500 RPMs. Mostly uh, in the marine environment, people run Ford Lehmans at about 2000 RPM. We're way down at 1500. It's enough RPM to get full engine temperature and not create any problems related to underloading. Uh, but gives us a very economical range. Uh, if we we can bump up to 2,000 RPM and instead of going seven knots, we go nine knots, the fuel range is cut in half from 4,300 nautical miles about or 4,400 nautical miles down to about 2,100 nautical miles. So for coastal cruising, if you want it, absolutely throttle up to 2,000 RPM and burn twice the fuel. We decide to cruise at seven knots and burn less fuel because that way we can just keep going. Anyway, RPMs do impact uh, the fuel range quite a bit, and so I should have probably mentioned that in the fuel management. Hey, you got any other questions? Leave them in the comments. We'll answer them after the next video. Thanks and bye. Greetings from Everett. Just keep, just keep hey. So, our YouTube channel stuff, it should get a lot better now because Michelle, our daughter, got us YouTube channel for dummies for Christmas. So this is my new reading assignment according to my daughter. So our YouTube channel productions can look better. So we'll see. Talk to you later. Bye.